So special right triangles. We're going to talk today. We're taking lesson 5A. We're splitting it in two because I want to make sure you know the patterns well. They show up on standardized tests all the time. We use them tons when we're solving for area, um, for missing parts of triangles. We have what are called 45, 45, 90 triangles, and we have what are called 30, 69 triangles. They're known as the special rights. Um, they're built off the fact that the pattern of solving for their sides is exactly the same. So I don't have to take the time to use the Pythagorean theorem all the time. So it's a basically huge time saver. So one thing you need to remember, we're going to work with a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Let's see if this will let me move it or not. It's not wanting to. Here we go. Um, is when you have a 45, 45, 90, if I was to draw this out, putting those angles in, what do you know about the two legs of your triangle? They're congruent. Because if the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent, the sides opposite them are congruent, right? So we know that's going to be the case. So anytime you see 45, 45, 90, you might also be called an isosceles right triangle. They mean the same thing, and you're going to hear me interchange both of them. Now, I want to, us to figure out the pattern to solve for the missing sides. So I want you to solve for the length of the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So I want to use the Pythagorean theorem on these. So on the first one, now we're not going to write a squared plus b squared equals c squared down again, right? We're going to go leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. But there's your hypotenuse, right? So I'm going to go leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Nice, easy numbers. 2 squared plus 2 squared, what does that equal, guys? 4 plus 4, which is going to be 8, right? So I get 8 is equal to x squared. Can I take the square root of both sides? Right? Now, guys, can I have a negative length here? Can I? No. So what's the square root of 8? 2 root 2, right? So it's going to be a positive 2 root 2. So there's 2 root 2 right there for my hypotenuse. Okay. Now, look at B. If one leg's 7, what's the other one? 7. Can I call this one Y and let's solve for the hypotenuse there? So I still have leg squared, so 7 squared plus 7 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Well, 7 squared is 49 plus 49 equals y squared. Well, that's 98 is equal to y squared. What do I need to do both sides? I need to take the square root of it. Now, guys, again, get in the habit of keeping your plus and the minus. We're going to drop it now because we know it's going to be a positive answer. What's the square root of 98 simplified down to? The simplest radical form. Um, no. We should have, how about 49 and 2? What's 49 times 2, guys? 98. This is one you need to learn to recognize. What's the square root of 49? Seven. So it'll be 7 root 2. So my hypotenuse is going to be 7 root 2. Does anyone see a pattern yet? Let's look at the next one. Notice this time they didn't tell you it was an isosceles triangle, but they gave you one little angle of 45. So what do I know about the other little angle? It's 45. So I still know it's a 45, 45, 90, or an isosceles right. So isn't this leg 5 root 2? So then you do the Pythagorean theorem again. So let's call this one y again. I'm going to go 5 root 2 squared, because that's one leg, plus 5 root 2 squared which is your other leg, equals my hypotenuse squared. All right, guys, this is where it's a little bit fun. What's 5 times the square root of 2 squared? That's me. No, it's 25 times what? 2, right? Because you square the 5, which is 25, right? And then you square your root 2, which is 2. So 25 times 2 is 50. So I got 50 plus 50 equals y squared. Oh, this is turning out nice numbers. Right? What's the square root of 100? So this is 10. Hmm. Now, oh, that's cruel, Gregerson. You want to do it in variables? Yep. I want it just for variables. If I know that one leg's x, what's the other one going to be? x. So how do if we call the hypotenuse right now y or h? It doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to call it y. And I'm still trying to solve for it. Just the only issue here is my answer is going to have an x in it. Okay, no big deal. I think it would still help us see the pattern. 
So I'm going to go leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Guys, what's x squared plus x squared? Yeah, 2x squared, right on. Thank you for not saying x to the fourth. If it was x to the fourth, you'd have multiplied, but we're adding here. All right, so that's 2x squared equals y squared. All right, take the square root of it. Do I need to have the negative there? Nope, so I'm dropping it. Guys, what is the square root of 2x squared? What does that simplify down to? All right, so I have an x squared and I got a 2, right? What's the square root of x squared, guys? So it would be x root 2. So my answer is really x root 2. Guys, what's my pattern? What about the root 2? You got to be a little more specific than root 2, but I agree with you. Root 2 is involved. How do I do this? How do I find the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse equals what? Bingo. Isn't that what the pattern is? Even when I got 10 up there, still didn't we multiply by a root 2? What's 5 root 2 times root 2? It's still 10. So the pattern is I just take the leg and I multiply it by root 2. What if I know the hypotenuse and I want to find the leg? What would you do? You divide by root 2, right? So yeah, the pattern will always stay the same. So that's why we have what's called the isosceles right um, theorem or the 45-45-90 theorem. It's literally the following. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the length of the hypotenuse is the length of the leg times root 2. Now, in the SAT, which is a standardized test, you guys will, it's also the PSAT, which many of you will be taking, um, they have what's called the generic, I call it the generic um, triangle. And it shows you the pattern. We actually, that was the D, the last one that we just did. It's X, X, and X root 2 because it shows the physical pattern on your 45, 45, 90 triangle. It shows that the legs are the same, right? And to get to the hypotenuse, you would multiply by root two. So there's some rules I tell people. If you're going from a smaller side to a larger side, you always multiply, right? And if you're going larger to smaller, you always do what? Divide. And the rule kind of makes it really simple, but that triangle, you don't have to have the arrows there, but that triangle is gonna show up over again on standardized tests. In fact, if I was doing homework, that triangle is what I would draw on the top of my OneNote or your draw board or whatever page that you're working on, and I would have your 45, 45, 90 triangle. Now, some people don't like the triangle. Some people just want to memorize the rules. Well, what are the rules for 45, 45, 90 triangle? Well, the leg is also equal to the other leg, right? And we always know the hypotenuse is just a leg times the square root of 2. So you can almost set it up like a formula, and then you can work backwards with an equation. I just like using the pattern by looking at the triangle. Now, if I were you, I would memorize this generic triangle. Without the arrows there, okay, you need to know it. In your very near future, you might be asked to show me the generic triangle. Got it? Okay, why didn't you just write down that's probably on the quiz? Would you write it down that it's probably on the quiz, please? Thank you. Guys, I give hints. You're supposed to follow them, okay? You're supposed to write them down. All right, now let's just use these patterns. All right, let's use the patterns. Now I'm going to redraw the triangle here so I don't have to slide up or down with it. But if I know it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, I literally just go like this. And I can use that for my patterns. And you're going to be asked. Sometimes, really, it saves tons of work being shown. All right, guys, what would you solve for first there? Y or X? What's Y? Okay, so Y equals 8. What's X going to be? Yep, that's how much work you had to show on that problem. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? That's the whole point of it. Otherwise, you had to use the Pythagorean theorem. Yay, right? Let's know. We don't have to. All right, how about the next one? What side do I know? So I need to get to the leg. So do I multiply or divide? If I'm going from hypotenuse to leg, do I multiply or divide? What do I divide by? All right, so do that. X is 5 divided by root 2. Can I leave my answer like this? You could. You just get it wrong. Okay, so don't do that, right? So I need to rationalize the denominator, friends. All right, so let's do that. We have root 2 times root 2. 
So go numerator, I get 5 root 2 over what? Nope, what's root 2 times root 2 is what? Square root of 4, which gives me 2. Can I simplify any more? Can the 2 divide into the 5 at all? So this would be your answer, 5 root 2 over 2. Always notice I ask several questions. Is it in simplest form? Now, some of you are like, Greg, so you did that on your head. That's the whole point of rationalizing and stuff. You should get to the point where you realize, I went root 2 times root 2 to get the fact that it would give me a 2 because that's squaring the square root. All right, guys, what did you get for y? Yep, so that's 10 root 2. How do I get to x? Divide by root 2 or multiply by root 2? I'm going from leg there, so I'm going to multiply, right? So I'm going to multiply by root 2. So I'm going to go 10 root 2 times root 2. All right, so what does that get me, guys? Should be 20. Now some of you are like, where did she get 20 from? Let me show you this step real quick. That's 20 root 4. Oh, excuse me, 10 root 4. Isn't that going to be 20 when you're simplifying it? So if you can do that quickly, great. All right, look at the next one. Do I have to solve for both or really just one? <coughs> All right, so what side do I have again? Hypotenuse, okay. So if I have the hypotenuse, how do I get to the leg? Multiply or divide? All right, so I'm going to divide by root 2. Okay. So I'm going to go 16 divided by root 2. What do I do now? Yeah, i got to rationalize my denominator. So I get 16 root 2 over 2. Am I in simplest form? If I can, once I get rid of that radical 2 in the denominator, now I have to look to see does the 16 and the 2 that are outside of the radicals, can they simplify? Yeah, yeah and so that will give you 8 root 2. So x is 8 root 2. What's y going to be, guys? All right, 8 root 2. All right, I think almost everybody but Nate, or Nate always, once again, by himself, right? Um, I want you guys to do the following ones for me. Do A, B, C, and F with the person next to you. I'm going to fill in all of these, but I want you guys to do those four, okay? I want you guys to do those four. Start. All right, so with this one, when you were solving this on A, did you guys get X equals 4 and Y equals 4? Yes. All right, and then on B, you got x is equal to 5, right, because it was the other leg, and y, which is your hypotenuse, is 5 root 2. On C, you're given the leg to be 7 root 3, so the other leg, y, is 7 root 3, but still, what's the pattern to get to the hypotenuse? You only multiply by what? Root 2. So notice x is going to be 7 root 6. Now, I put the other ones down just in case you want to solve for them later, which I really do think that E is a good one to look at. But for like D here in this case, I'm given the hypotenuse. I need to divide by root 2. If you divide by root 2, what happens? Anytime you divide something by itself, doesn't that simplify out to be 1? So that goes away. So X and Y are both 10. On E, again, you didn't have to do these, but I want to make sure that you see this. I know the hypotenuse, so I... <sighs> Divide by root 2 to get the legs. I rationalize the denominator. I get 5 root 2 over 2. That's as good as it's going to get. Then for F, you're given the hypotenuse is 12 root 5. But the pattern is to get to the leg, I divide by root 2. So right here, I divided by root 2. <coughs> but did I have to rationalize the denominator? And when I did that, I got 12 root 10 over 2, which simplifies down to 6 root what? 6 root 10. So that should be your final answer on this one. How'd you guys do? You have to be really good with radicals. Have you noticed that? You have to be confident with it. Like if you're not sure how to rationalize a denominator, do you see how it's going to be really rough on this homework? Yeah, you have to be really good at simplifying radicals. All right, let's do an ACT, SAT type problem on this one. It says the following. Given triangle ABC with AB is equal to 4 and the measure of angle ACD is 135, what is the value of segment AC? Now, when you first look at that, it's kind of like, why did they do that? Because this is what I'm looking for. But what's the one thing we've always talked about with standardized tests or any diagram? You start doing what? Marking what you know, right? So, guys, does anyone see what the measure of angle ACB is, this angle right here? It's what? Oh, 45 degrees. All of a sudden, I now have what type of triangle? Isosceles right triangle. So the fact is I know that would be 4. Hmm, 
Anyone want to tell me what the length of the hypotenuse is? Notice they didn't come out and blatantly tell you it was an isosceles right triangle. Doesn't it save a lot of time? Now, if you had to, could you use the Pythagorean theorem for that? But ooh, okay, let's just use the pattern, right? So it'd be 4 root 2. All right, now look at the next one. Um, they tell you on these, make me laugh all the time, they always say figures drawn to scale unless they tell you. So like half the diagrams are always like not drawn to scale on a standardized test. So the figure is not drawn to scale. Refer to the provided figure. Evaluate the measure of angle CAD. So I want to know the measure of this angle right here. Those are your possible answers. Talk to me. What do I know? Yes. You know like, yep. Can we now I'm not using the side this time in the sense of length yeah. to help me out, but can I use that help me to figure out what my angles are? Do you notice that? They give you the isosceles right, but they say nothing about angle measure, but you're supposed to remember, oh yeah, the acute angles are always what? 45. I like that because really, yes, it's not strictly a 45, 45, 90 problem in the sense of I'm solving for sides, but do I still have to know about 45, 45, 90 triangles to do it? So yeah, so all you have to do is take 180 minus your 135 and subtract your 26, right? And what do you guys get? Is it 19 or 29? Which one is it? 19. Thank you. When you're calculating it. What do you guys think? This stuff isn't bad if you can simplify radicals, right? If you're good with radicals, it's not going to be bad. Now, do you think there's going to be problems where you get have multiple steps and stuff again? But this is going to be on your quiz on Friday, so let's make sure we're confident and you come in with good questions tomorrow. Guys, I'm also here after school today if you have any questions that you need to ask on the homework. Yes, sir.